Right, hello guys, and welcome back to another episode in my DIY analog synthesizer project tutorial videos. And what I'm going to be covering in this video is the sub oscillator, as the heading says. So, what we're going to use in the main ingredient or the main chip we're going to use is this one here, which is known as the CD404, which is a CMOS chip, and I think it's either known as a decade counter or binary counter. And there's quite a, a, a several inputs, or should I say outputs on this chip, where we get a um, half division, we get a fourth division, an eighth division, sixteenth, it goes up quite a lot, quite a few uh, divisions. So we can divide our original clock frequency, which will be our master oscillator, by half, and we can go even like further than that so we can go so say minus one basically that will be say minus one octave minus two minus three four and probably i think we can probably go to about minus eight octaves which is quite overkill but anyway i'm just here to sort of let you know what i personally did and how i put my circuit together so anyway as we see this is our main chip here which is the cd um 404 and what we will do is we we use Pin eight and tie that to ground like so and pin 16 will go to our plus voltage input so that could be either minus 12 or sorry plus 12 or plus 15 even plus 18 depending on your your bipolar power supply that you're using okay and just out of practice what we'll do is good practice is use a hundred nanofarad ceramic low ESR which stands for um, equivalent series resistance capacitor to decouple that and stabilize the actual chip so that's just a bypass cap and we will take that to ground as well I'm going to try and explain what I can in the simplest terms as I can because you know everybody's at a different level as far as knowledge as far as these circuits are concerned so I'm not going to assume everybody knows everything I mean my knowledge is quite basic as I always say I'm not an electrical engineer I'm just somebody you know who's I've kind of looked at circuits just really trying to get into it and try to understand what's going on anyway so what we need to feed the um, the chip is our master oscillator frequency so what I did was I took the sawtooth out from my oscillator and then I fed that into a resistor which I will just call say I think it was about 4.7k again you don't have to take these values for gospel uh, just experiment and try your own uh, try your own values and see what works best and then we will send that into the inverting side of an op amp so if it's inverting that's going to be minus and our plus is our non-inverting side and we have a one mega ohm resistor which will be in the positive feedback configuration so we're going to the inverting side like so I hope that's making sense so far and obviously our op amp operational amplifier will be put tied to our plus rail and minus rail power rails respectively depending if we're using we could use say, a single supply or a bipolar supply and then we'll pass that through a capacitor and we can use say a we will use a electrolytic capacitor with a big value of say one microfarad here so C1 R1 and R2 right so then we will send that into pin 10 which is our clock clock pin now just in case you don't know what clock is basically that is 
which will be a master frequency. That's what it is. It's just an electrical um, electronics way of explaining it, sort of like a master master frequency. So that will be your your signal in. So say for instance, we could send a I don't know a hundred hertz sawtooth in on one of these. We're going to get that divided by two, and then we'll get that divided by two exponentially, as we would with you know as we count up um, we count down octaves. The frequency will be divided by half exponentially. So pin 11 is going to be our reset pin and again we will tie that straight to ground and what we will have is a square wave which will come out from pin 7 and from pin 6 and a few other pins but pin 6 and pin 7 are the ones I'm in concern with because one, I think pin seven will give you half, say one octave down, and pin six will give you two octaves down. I'm not 100% sure which way around that goes. But again, if you get hold of this chip, you want to give this circuit a go, I would say have a look at the data sheet. You can't go wrong. So we will take... I'm just going to try and roughly draw this. So let's say... That is our minus one sub. And the next one is going to be our minus two sub oscillator square. So we've got a couple of options what we can do with this. What I did was I sent both to a resistor. Let's just say it's quite small resistances, my most sort of two, 220 are, sorry I've just written 200 there, it's about 220 ohms and then I sent them into a switch which was basically a single pole double throw switch, oh, sorry that would be a double pole double throw switch I think, so anybody looking at this drawing will know exactly what, what that's supposed to be anyway, so pardon me if I've got that wrong, so there we have the switch and then I will run that again into another op amp or the other side of this op amp. So say we could say this is U1 and this would be U2 of a dual op amp. And we will send this in via a voltage voltage follower configuration. Right, so sorry about that, just moving up the page a bit. And we basically send that into the inverting side and then we will tie the um, the negative side around to the output. So we just get what goes in, exactly what comes out. And again, send that to another electrolytic decoupling cap. Just helps us uh, block any direct current coming through because all we want is the AC audio signal from that. And then we can send that off to our audio mixer where we put all the other oscillators in. So yeah, so we have the VCO. I put a question mark on that because you can use absolutely any VCO you want onto this or any oscillator. You don't even have to drive it with a VCO. You could build a standalone oscillator where you can just control via a potentiometer and you just basically build this circuit and tie that oscillator to it. And these will, these, you know, the frequency will be hard locked. So no mucking about with any kind of temperature control or anything fancy like that. It is literally banging true. And that is it. So from our audio mixer, and we'll, we have our switch, and then we can switch between minus one octave down or minus two, depending on our master frequency from our oscillator. So there we can see, again, another very, very low parts count um, circuit, quite simple to put together. If you can get a screenshot of this, take a screenshot of this, and uh, yeah, you can use this as a basic a basis for a schematic. Like I said, I will be trying to post up schema some schematics soon and put them somewhere, so they can be sort of downloaded via a zip file for you guys. 
And yeah, like I said, this is this is the basically the method that I use. There is a few other methods you could use, which say for instance the SH101 uses the um, CD4013 dual D-type flip-flop chip to create its um, sub sub oscillator. And I was at the beginning actually trying to think to myself, I actually wanted to use a triangle wave as an oscillator or a sub oscillator. There is other methods of doing it. I mean, for instance, the Mini Brute has a square wave oscillator and a sine wave oscillator. But for the space I had, it just looked a little bit too complicated for me. Maybe something I'm going to try in the future. So you could have, say, for instance, a sawtooth, a square and a triangle wave sub oscillator. So if anybody out there watching this video does know of those methods and does know a really good, you know, a schematic, please leave, um, please leave a link in the comment section. And again, please share these videos, uh, sort of comment and share your ideas, people. We can help each other out as a community here. Anyway, thank you for watching. I will be back soon for some more. Take it nice and easy. Bye for now.